what's up? It's me, Beth, from the St. Louis Public Library, and you're watching Read This, Craft That, where we talk about good books and this month's Take and Make Craft Project. This month I have two books about the college experience, one light and one kind of heavy, and a fun sciencey craft project, or a crafty science project. So anyway, let's get started. Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi is about life in a college town from two perspectives. One is Sam, the local guy who works in a coffee shop. He is burned out being around college students, especially since his own university dreams have been derailed. The other is Penny, a new freshman girl who is a quiet introvert and is very annoyed to find out that her roommate is an extroverted trust fund baby. Now, on the cover, Penny has dark, glossy black hair that hints that she's Asian, but Penny Lee is not your typical Asian, suburban, middle-class family. No, Penny is, lives with her mom, her single mom, and has spent her entire life cleaning up her mom's messes, literal and emotional. So she's really looking forward to college being a vacation from taking care of her mom. Now. Penny agrees, sort of reluctantly, to go to the coffee shop and meet her roommate's cousin, Sam. Although Sam, of course, is way too hip and cool to spend any time or even look at awkward Penny. Uh, but when Penny runs into Sam later, in fact, on the weird kind of shady part of town, when he is having a complete emotional breakdown, she knows she can't just leave him. She has been there before. She knows what it's like to just completely lose it. And Sam, having what is the worst day of his life, actually is sort of grateful that this person who doesn't know him takes him, picks him up, and takes him back to where he's staying. Because Sam has a lot of secrets of his own that he's trying to hide from people. And when Penny gets a chance to see the real Sam, not the cool coffee shop hipster, but his gritty working class angsty self, she realizes he needs an emergency contact. So they agree to swap text phone numbers, but just as emergency contacts, nothing more. Well, one conversation leads to another, and pretty soon Penny can't keep track of her schoolwork or anything else because her conversations with Sam feel more real than anything else. And Sam, suddenly, with Penny's encouragement, finds the confidence to sign up for classes again and start trying to reach for his dreams of making videos. So this book is a really kind of heavy, deep dive into what it's like to be independent for the first time and living on your own. It's so interesting to read Penny and Sam's alternating perspectives when they're both trying to come to grips with some very similar problems. So will Penny's roommate ever stop bugging her about who she's texting all the time? And will Sam finally get his video done and maybe get the confidence to make a move? You'll have to read the book and check it out and see. It's Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. It's available in print, downloadable ebook, and as a downloadable audiobook. Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry by Joya Joffney, published by Harper Teen. Quinn loves journaling more than anything. It's this last semester of her senior year before she goes to college, and she is dealing with a lot of pressure from her parents. They think she's gotten into an Ivy League college, and they're really pressuring her to take the next steps. But Quinn, she just doesn't know how to tell them this. She's got a lot of secrets, and one of the ways she deals with them is writing them down in her journal. Now, her mom never stops telling her about how much harder she had it growing up in Chicago on the South Side. But Quinn doesn't know how to tell her that life in her private school isn't perfect either, especially after she broke up with her friend over that thing that she doesn't really want to talk about. Life gets even stranger and more tense when someone steals her journal and posts lists, pages from her journal, on the internet for everyone in her class to see. This mystery person says they are going to keep posting these lists unless Quinn does things off her biggest fears list? 
Quinn is sure she knows the guy who's doing this. It has to be Carter, the guy she was studying with the day before, who accidentally took her journal and then accidentally left it in his first hour class. But Carter, the scholarship guy, he swears he didn't do it. He swears he has no idea. And to prove his point, he's going to help her complete things off his biggest fears list. Now, who does this guy think he is? Quinn doesn't even really know him, and they've never gotten along. But before Quinn can even agree to this, Carter starts planning a college visit to a place she got accepted to, but she doesn't really know if she wants to go to. Carter knows she has to do this because if her biggest, biggest fear gets out, nothing is going to be the same, and she doesn't know how she'll deal with letting her parents down. Because, in fact, that Ivy League school they think she got into she didn't really get into. She sort of faked the acceptance letter. And in fact, she's been put on a wait list for the local state university. <sighs> so it's really great in this book to see how Quinn deals with meeting new people, facing her own sort of wealth privilege ideas, and growing as a person. And along the way, Quinn makes some really great new friends and owns up to some mistakes she's made in the past and gets to know a side of Carter that she didn't expect. This sweet story, of course, has a lot of romance, but nothing too hot and steamy. And really, though, this book is about the friendship drama, because Carter learns that who she thought was her friend maybe wasn't the person she thought, and the people that she thought she didn't like maybe have something more to offer for her. She really grows over the course of the story into a young woman who is totally confident in speaking her mind and owning herself. Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry by Joya Jopney is published by Harper Teen and available in print as a downloadable ebook or as an audiobook. So, our take and make project this month is a sciencey craft project or a crafty science project, however you want to look at it. In the bags, you are going to get a whole bunch of these fuzzy craft sticks that old timers might call pipe cleaners and some plastic colorful beads. Now don't worry, this isn't your sibling's cutesy little project. This is in fact a model of a real scientific thing called a DNA. If you're not familiar with DNA, it is a name for the very tiniest parts in the nucleus of our cells that contain information that make us who we are. And by the end of this project, you will know a little bit more about this. So, start off with the beads. You're going to take all of these beads and sort them by colors. And after you sort them by colors, you need to label them. Now, you need to give them these specific letters. The A and the T stands for important scientific words, which I'm not going to bore you with right now. And the C and the G also stand for the names of the specific proteins that make up this part of the DNA. Now the thing with DNA, and this is where it branches away from just making this a fun craft project, is that A's are always going to be matched up with T's. They're like puzzle pieces. C's always match up with G's. In our model, these all these beads look alike, but if you wanted to make a more complicated model, you would see that the end of a C can never fit with anything other than a G, and the end of an A can never fit with anything other than a T. So once you've got your beads together, you should have um, 18 beads here. Make sure you pair the letters together and keep them that way, okay? Now, let's go on to these fuzzy craft sticks. Pick which two colors you want to be the long parts. In this case, the purple's going to be a long part. And pick which ones are going to be the little small steps. So in this case, we're going to use these colors. So take these, and you're going to cut them into 10 small pieces. Each craft stick you'll cut into five pieces, just about this long. And if they're not even, don't worry, it's fine because I'll show you how it's all going to work out in the end. So once you've got your pieces, you're actually only going to need nine of these. Start wrapping one end around the long side, and it's going to look a bit like this. So you have what looks like the edges of a ladder, and you just take one little end like this, wrap it around a couple times until it sticks. 
So in this take and make project, in case I didn't mention, all you need access to is a pair of scissors. Everything else you need is in the bag. Once you've got all nine of these on the long end, this is where you're gonna go back to your beads. Start with any one you want, but if it's an A, like in this case, our green ones are A's, make sure you pair it with a yellow T. And if you start with a yellow T, make sure you pair it with a green A. And put two beads on each little broken rung of this ladder. If you put a purple G on there, make sure you pair it with a blue C. Don't get it mixed up, otherwise you'll have some sort of freak genetic mutation, and we don't want to go there. Once you have two beads on each of these rungs, on all nine of them, take the other side and you are going to connect it up like this, but with two beads on the inside. You should get something that looks like this, which in fact kind of looks like a ladder with two beads on the little ladder rungs between them. And this is in fact exactly what DNA looks like. Now instead of nine of these, inside each of our cells, we have hundreds of thousands of these. And each of these proteins and sequence of proteins is like a little genetic computer code for hair color, eye color, skin color, personality traits, all kinds of things about us that make us different from one another. Different and yet also the same. DNA is the same thing in all mammals. And you can find information, more information about DNA and how it relates to us and our ancestry in our take and make instructions. So don't forget when you're done with the instructions, read the backs because we have suggestions for some really good books and more information. Even our database, Ancestry.com. So check it out, our take and make craft of this month, the DNA model. You can get from any St. Louis Public Library branch. Thanks for joining me this month, and there's still time to register for our summer camps. Yes, did you know? We don't just have a summer reading club. We actually have free week-long camps that you can register for. And I'll think you really like this one. It's a maker camp, and it's available at a couple different locations. If you sign up, you can actually learn to use all these different kinds of cool tools to make these great maker projects like robots, circuits, or even rockets. Yeah, you have to be between the ages of 12 and 18, and you can sign up at our website, www.slpl.org. Once you've learned to make the basics, you can then go on to make anything you can imagine. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Beth, and I'll see you next month for another episode of Read This, Craft That from the St. Louis Public Library.